I had an idea to create a top-down game but with 3D graphics which I later decided would suit better in a third-person perspective. I decided to use 3D graphics as I wanted to learn how to create 3D models and also learn how to better manipulate them in a game engine. So I started 3D modeling in Blender. I didn't want to use guns as the main weapon as I had an idea to create some sort of samurai and this is how the model turned out. Pretty bad. But uh, I'll get back to that another day. I put it through Mixamo, slapped some cool animations on and threw it all together in Unity. After I had the animations from Mixamo, I created an animator controller and set up two layers. I have the base layer which controls the idle and running animations. I also have the attack layer which controls the attacking animation. This is because I'm blending the attack layer into the idle and run animations because the player's attacking animation is standing still. So it looks weird to go from running to standing still while you're still moving, sort of creates a sliding effect. I might stop the player altogether when performing an attack because if I attack while moving then the chain doesn't usually get too far, but I might also just mess around with the attacking some more to make it feel smoother. Anyways, I used an avatar mask to mask the attack layer and disabled any animations on the attack layer that involved the legs and feet, so they could be blended nicely. I wanted to learn about the new input system, so I decided to implement it into the movement. I checked out Unity's manual on the new input system. It's really cool because you can set up and change the input system via code as well as the more visual asset that generates the classes and methods you define in the editor. The input action has its own class that you refer to and it's named whatever you named it in the editor as well. You have to set the input action when either the game is first run or when you want to make use of the input. I'm doing this in the awake method. For the movement, I check whether the action has been performed and then read the value as a vector 2. I set that to a variable which then lets me manipulate the character based on the input. I think it has great potential and I will do a more in-depth tutorial at some stage in the future. Back to the main weapon, I spent ages researching weapons in history that samurai may have used and I came across a weapon from the gods, and it was just what I wanted. I thought, cool, easy to implement, so I started implementing the attack for it. Little did I know that it would take days to perfect this attack mechanism. My initial idea for the attack was to simply add some velocity to an object to make it stop at a certain range away from the player. I also wanted to make it drag enemies towards you or their weapons, as well as just whipping them with the chain, cause you know, why not? While that worked fine, there was no way that this looked cool. So I went back to the drawing board. I tried to use a line renderer, but then the chain wasn't transparent and I'm too lazy to work out why that was. So I decided to use ray casting and ray cast out from the player to either a target or its maximum range and then shoot out a chain towards this target. Finally, should be good, let's just run the game. This took a while for me to get right, mainly because little sleep from shifts at work that started 2 in the morning result in terrible programming skills. I had a couple of days where I decided to leave it for the day and come back to it the next day, which to my surprise worked very well. This is because I woke up one morning, spent about half an hour working on it and finally got it working. I spent some time working on the post-processing profile, so this is the post-processing effects that you can see in the game. A lot of it was spent on the lighting and also the fog to create some baking and some light maps. This was also to change the color grading, uh, add some bloom, which you can't really see at the moment because it's very flat colored. Um, also to create some depth of field, ambient occlusion, and yeah. I think the purpose of these sorts of videos going forward is to motivate me to spend some time working on game dev every week. I may not be working on my masterpiece or dream project game, but I'm still working on my skills and hopefully this motivated at least one other person to work on a small idea or project. So what do I have in store for the future of this project? To be honest, I came in with no plan, only a goal to learn or improve my skills. I might end up making a game out of this because I like the idea of eating enemies with a chain attack to pull them towards you or to destroy them. We'll see. Let me know if you enjoyed this type of video. Thanks. Be sure to join my Discord server and thank you to my two Patreons. 
Stay tuned for some tutorials in the future.